show for you today. We all know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to acknowledge it the only way the real can, okay? So from one of the hottest shows around, we have New Jersey housewife and breast cancer survivor, Amber Marchese here today, y'all. Yeah. We're gonna celebrate her success story. And later, you're going to learn that you don't have to be a millionaire or even over the age of eight to make a difference when it comes to the breast cancer battle, okay? We're about to do some things, really. Yeah. Plus, from foods that help prevent cancer to a rundown of the latest pink ribbon swag, we're gonna show you a ton of ways to educate, spread awareness, and fight, fight, fight. We are your sisters. Yes. We are ready to do our part. Are you ready? So yes. let's get started, America. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women worldwide, and today we want to give a shout out to many of you who have been affected by it. What you guys may not know is that when I was around 24, I actually had a little scare. Um, I was checking, you know, my breast um, because I saw a little pamphlet and I saw, you know, how to do it, and I was like, you know what, I, I haven't, I hadn't done that before. Let me just check. Well, while I was laying down in my bed, I actually found a little lump, and I freaked out, I went to my doctor, and then uh, my doctor was really surprised because she was like, you're really, really young, but let's be, you know, cautious. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to get a, a mammogram, and thank God, nothing, nothing was wrong. Yes. Um, but what I did learn is that once you turn 40, you should get an annual checkup. So with that said, I thought, because this is, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, that our lovely, beautiful 40-year-old Lonnie should get checked. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara told me she was taking me out for yogurt. <laughs> Frozen yogurt? Frozen, Frozen yogurt. yogurt. <laughs> so you know I was gonna go with her, but Try take it. a look. Wait, no. wait, you what? told me we were going out for yogurt. Lonnie, we're going to check your breast assist. We're gonna have a mammogram? Yes, we are. Come on, okay, I'll see you later. Lonnie. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Tamara is forcing me. So is this gonna hurt? Oh, just a little bit. You wanna see Ooh, these jacks? Oh, you ready to see them, ain't you? I can tell you ain't never seen them like this. It's like a pancake. Yeah. It's a big oh, pancake, yeah. Mom. You know what? Nobody asked you. Uh, a little bit more. Oh, okay, okay, that's enough, Donna. Just okay. Not a flapjack. Okay. Donna is stuck. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be ready in a few minutes. Okay, okay. Lonnie. So how are you feeling right now? I'm a little nervous, because, you know, I feel good, but you never know, so. Come right this way, this is the radiologist, Dr. Brousseau. Hi, Doc. Hi, Lonnie, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a seat, we'll go over your mammograms. Okay. Well, you'll notice that you have dense breast tissue. Wow, it looks like Earth. Well, it's pretty common. We don't see any problems at all. Okay. That's a normal mammogram. You're in good health. Thank you. <laughs> it's such a relief. Thank you so much. Before you go, I want you to remember a few things. Number one, early detection saves lives. Okay. So it's important for women to get screened yearly, beginning at the age of 40. Thanks for being such a great example of that. Well, thank you. And you know, I have something for you. What's that? My number. Oh. Yeah! Totally clear. Yeah! Oh, I am ready. You are you serious. And you're okay. buying it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to really thank you for taking me because it's very, very important. I found that out. So please, if you're over 40, get your mammograms today. All Amen. Right? That's a good idea to just go with your girlfriend so you don't, mm -hmm. you don't want to go alone. You know, make it an event so that you're taking care of each other. Yeah. Yes. Now, when you say hurts, hurts in what way? It's just like, a little, it's just what a it little feels like, like well, pressure, right? Yeah, well, what it is is that you put it on a, a platter and then they have this contraption that, you know, kind of squeezes it and that's where you might get a little So it just feels like someone's squeezing them really hard. I mean, like a real good strong man. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> That and we recommend women of all ages check your yes. breasts. Just check your, you know, check for lumps. And you were, sh you were showing me how to. Yes. You know, it, it takes no time out of your day at all. And did I tell y'all the doctor was hot? Oh, <laughs> that, that, that helped too. Well, Lonnie, that may have been just a little painful, but a little pain is worth getting checked out. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, why don't we move on to some girl chat? Yes. yes. We yes. love our girl so, chat. I'm a mom, and you guys know I like to get dressed mm -hmm. up. 
Um, but once you become a mom, does that mean that you have to stop dressing sexy? God, no, you better not. That's you, when you're supposed to turn it up. When I have children, I still want to be provocative. <laughs> You do? That, you do even, want to do that. Even if you have a girl, though, so that I can have more children after. Like, I want to be, like, the hot mom. Like, you know, Coco Chanel says it best. She says, there's nothing that will make a woman look so old than desperately trying to look so young. Mm, mm -hmm. So the key word there is mm -hmm. desperate. When you're mm -hmm. desperately trying to yeah. show a lot of leg, a lot of boob, and trying to show the world that you still got it, that's when you may be veering. So, but the thing I mean, about Chris Jenner that works She looks that, good. No, she doesn't dress cheap. Well, you know okay, what I'm saying? that's the key, I guess. It's yeah, you sexy, can't look cheap. But it's and not cheap. You mean by look, cheap. not just cost. Because you can buy it's inexpensive things and I'm look. not talking about inexpensive things, I right. said cheap. No, okay, how the difference? Tell me the difference. Plain and expensive, but that cheap. doesn't mean they look how? It's looking like you just got off the corner. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. Got it. Yeah, or you at Forever 21 and you 60. Lots. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. No I, shade. No, I yes. agree. It's like my mother borrowing a half shirt from me. Where you going, Evelyn? <laughs> so, what about like a J-Lo? Like J-Lo is I'm over sorry, 40. I'm sorry, she's beef Exactly, yeah. that's what balls. I feel. And I think some people were like, well, she's a mom, especially in the booty video. But I just feel like, again, celebrate how amazing you look. Okay. And it's tasteful. I agree. Real tasteful. Be real though, there are some, and okay, I know this is y'all girl. Boy. Mariah Carey, watch what y'all think about watch that? It. She's got I twins and then twins. I actually, I'm not dying over that, but that's because it's Mariah. Yeah, she hasn't changed. And she's she hasn't, been, she's no, been that no, no, way. No, 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 you no, mean no. after she had the twins, she dressed oh, I even thought more you meant from like before, like yeah, black no, dress. I mean like before she had the babies, and then once she had the the babies, she's uh, still the same. That Do you is see true. what I'm saying? That's true. How about this, moms? Okay. As a stylist, I always think the appropriate occasion. So if you saw her at the park wearing that, carrying her twins, you might think different than when she's away from her twins I on the red carpet. I, yeah. Right? If her kids are at the babysitters and she's out having a good time, do you. Have yeah. fun. This is great. Do y'all have a pressure? Do you feel like a pressure because your mothers too still stay sexy plus your performers? I just think it depends to on the stay individual. Sexy. You know yeah. what I mean? I think for me, after I had a kid, I, not that I let myself go, but I got too comfortable. You think so? Well, there was you a time, great. I know now, but there was a time where I just wore sweats and I was in like my PJs all the time and I really had to learn, you know, to, to, to find myself again. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, absolutely. So I, There's so many people that will be able to relate to that. What you yeah. do to find yourself? Was you lost? Would you, you have a map? What I mean is... Find your zhuzh. Find my zhuzh, but not only that, my life became more about just taking care of my son. He was my priority. I'm talking about every single second, every single hour. I was a stay-at-home mom for about a year and a half, and I didn't realize that I lost a bit of myself while doing that. My sister actually was like, uh, Tamara, when are you coming back? Uh, <laughs> it's been like a year and a half. I need you to get in a dress. I need you to get in something. What did Adam say? Uh, see, Adam is so supportive, but I know he was probably thinking, you know, the same thing. But most, more than anything, I just wanted to do it for myself. I wanted to feel more, mm -hmm. you know, yes. like myself. And, you know, after you have a baby, you feel empowered as a woman. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I just want to, I want to find my zhuzh back. I want to, not only that, I want to feel a little bit more, you know, just, just and sexier. It, yeah. it feels good, right, that you know you can have both. You don't, yes. you can have, feel like you when you're prioritizing yourself and or when you're prioritizing yourself. Adam and I have been married, you know, for three for three years. Right. Now I want to like, I don't know, right? Step it up. up a little bit. Step up a little yeah, bit. you want to get it out, don't you? Yes, yes okay. I do. I feel like women like Tamar and Beyonce make it possible. Like they show you that like, you absolutely can still keep your sexiness and, your, and be a mom as well. You know what? Beyonce's man and my husband's in the record business, so they are constantly looking oh, at artists like, what's, what's tea, what's going on? Well, what about your heels? Like, you can't have like, yeah. corns, can't have candy corns on your feet, girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he does appreciate when, when I put the, you know, freakum dress on. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> the who, the what, the where, where is it? The freakum dress. Wait, wait, what wait, is your wait. freakum dress? My freakum dress is when it's a tight dress that hugs all of my curves. And you yes. call it a what dress? A freakum dress. Beyonce, y'all know yes. the song. Yes. We, know, we just didn't know you had one. I no. know. You guys. I'm trying to like envision you going to Adam Adam. <laughs> Tonight? Tonight, I want to put on my freakum dress. <laughs> Yeah, it was more the phrase. I mean, is that how it goes? Yeah, no, like, I don't say Adam. I, I just, I just show up in my freakum dress. You just put it on. Yes. Show up and show out. That's what I'm yes, talking about. I do. Oh, okay. I, have, I have a black one and a red one. What? Two? Oh, 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 and a red one. You're wearing hussy colors. Oh, you got dust. Dust. Well, I personally feel very offended that 
but you don't put on your freakum dress for we, us. Oh, well, y'all gotta invite me out. Uh, we will. Oh, I okay. need I'll invite you out, but you gotta wear the freakum dress. <laughs> I know. Yes. That's really fine. If we would've done that, we would've been 10 years years ago. Tamara, how crazy has it gotten in a freakum dress? We turn up. How's that? <laughs> you sharing because I just, yes. I just love you're you. Love Lonnie. you. I so want to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> you know, Please let Tamara be a, a thought for all you moms out there. Yes. Own a freakum dress. Yes. 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 Live it up. Two. <laughs> Two in black and red. Sometimes I think I'm just here for your guys' amusement. No, Seriously. no, of course not. Let me tell you something, Tanta. I accept you for who you are. That's I appreciate thank you. it. That's thank, right. Thank okay, you for okay. being so wholesome because you bring me back to reality. I've <laughs> like always been teaching about the LBD. I never thought about the LFD. What's that? The little, little freakum dress. dress. Everybody has one. Everybody has Tamar, one. Tamar, what is your freakum dress? Ooh, what girl, I have like? several to choose. <laughs> That's all I got is freaking dress. What's your favorite when you need to just like, it's a night out and you know you just need to the go -to. bring it you know, all. My go-to, honestly, which I do believe all women should have is that sexy black dress. Yes. Uh -huh. right. Period. Right. You got to yeah. find one. You don't have to buy three or mm -hmm. two in your case. Mm -hmm. One that makes you feel like you are the sexiest thing on the planet and yes. nobody is the prettiest girl in the world <laughs> but you, okay? <laughs> That it's very that. I just have a feeling you wear yours every All night. All the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, do you guys ever like stuff your bra, put a butt pad on or something to fill out no. your freaking I ain't got to do that. Oh! I don't. Is that Spanx? shade or try to? No, I'm not going to lie. That? No, that's real girl talk. Feel I do. Your Spanx lift your booty though? Absolutely. I feel like Spanx pick up my booty because it be hanging sometimes. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. Sit up a little bit. Our first. <laughs> What? <laughs> Our first test episode, whatever, last season. Oh, Lord. When we did the butt bra and the gab bag. They yeah. did it. We're supposed to give them back to production. You kept them. I kept them. <laughs> and I wear it sometimes you on the do? show. What? 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 That's, That's okay. okay. She's I not okay. Okay. I think well, it's all I good. Gotta be real, like when you you know the grass is always greener. Yeah. Always through fashion and style, you can always create the perfect silhouette. But you know in your mind what you wish you had more of. I wish I had more curves. I am surrounded by the most bodacious, <laughs> gorgeous curves. I'm always. It hurts your back after a while when you walk out trying to be Adrian, <laughs> trying to do this like Lonnie, like always. So I got the butt bra. The freakum legs, and I try. I come out and I feel you like I'm okay. Helps, you know what would help you if you just look in that camera and just say, I'm Jeannie Mai, and I wear fake butts. I promise you, <laughs> you it, it'll be like a release. Are you just, being serious? Just, yes, just look right there. Do, do you oh understand? My God. Do you feel how I feel? Go. Feel it, girl. Feel it. Let it out. Yeah, you did this to Adrian. OK, I'm Jeannie Mai, <laughs> and I wear, <laughs> I wear <laughs> fake butts, and I do not lie. <laughs> Our first guest is not only a mom and a real housewife of New Jersey, but she is a proud survivor who kicked cancer in the butt. Yes. Please welcome Amber Marchese. to dish, but before we do that, you've got to go over and spin the heel. All right. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. Tell us oh. what you had for breakfast in a sexy voice. Oh, okay. No. All right. Oh, this will boy. be fun. See, let, me, let me get into this. <laughs> I had scrambled eggs and sausage. Oh. And a bowl of oatmeal. Oh. oh that good? All right. That's <laughs> <sexy. laughs> I love it. All right. Now, this is your first season of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yes. And you've been very open and honest about, you know, being a breast cancer survivor. What made you want to come out and share your story? I really felt that this was an excellent platform to tell my story, that cancer doesn't have any bias. It doesn't care if you're old, young. You know, it could hit any time, any place, you know. So I just felt that... You know, I want to tell my story. I was 31 years old, wow. and I had two babies. And here I'm thinking, I'm just mom trying to raise my little ones. 
and you know, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, with, with the diagnosis. So, well, we have a clip of your story. Let's take a look. This is a big day. The whole idea too is. You know, yes, I have these huge, obnoxious scars on my back, and yes, I have fake nipples and everything, but you can still be a warrior and conquer it all. And that's what this shoot was for me. Today's a special <laughs> day. I always wanted to be able to show other women who go through this that just because you have mastectomy, it doesn't mean that you're ugly. go through everything. I had a double mastectomy. I, I had a year and a half of chemotherapy. I mean, I have huge scars. My, my areolas aren't even mine. They're skin mm -hmm. grafts. Wow. I have no sensation whatsoever. I lost my hair, my eyebrows, my eyelashes. You know, like, you don't feel pretty. And I just wanted women to know that although you do go through this, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and you could still be beautiful. Yes. Wow. <laughs> what would you say got you through it? Uh, definitely my husband. He was there from the beginning right up to my last treatment. Every surgery, every chemo treatment, everything. My little ones were so young. They were mm -hmm. six months and a year and a wow. half. Wow. So, yeah, wow. I, I was actually breastfeeding when I found the lumps. Wow. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of them, and I turned to my husband, and he says, you got to get it checked out. And he, like, I'm like, oh, I overreact on everything. But when he said to get it checked out, I was like, OK, I got to get this checked out. Like, I got to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And the last chemo treatment, I was so excited. I didn't need help anymore. I could go home and just get on the ground and play with my kids. Mm -hmm. It was just the best thing. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, it was the best day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Now, you've been very public about your breast cancer battle. Yeah. But on the show, Melissa claims that she never knew about it. Do you buy that? Um, I, I'm just, I'm over it. You know, if that's how she handled it, regardless of the truth or the validity of, of it, I'm past it. So we move on. Everyone handles it in their own way. Well, <laughs> I'm a fan of the show, so I have to switch gears for okay. a second. <laughs> <laughs> so your husband, Jim, uh -huh. is taking a lot of heat, especially yes. on Twitter. I see, all right? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, he fuels a lot of, do you feel like he fuels a lot of the issues that you have with the girls on the show? No, he does not fuel it, for sure not. He reacts to it. So when someone was going against me, he was stepping up to that. So I promise you he's really a good guy and he just was being protective over me. <laughs> well, because I was really trying to figure out why he felt the need to out the twins like that. It was much needed and you get what you get and you get what you give. And that's what she give, gave to him and he gave it right back. Got it. Wow. Now, obviously, everyone is talking right now a lot about your castmates, Teresa mm -hmm. and Joe Giudice. With everything that's going on, how did you react to the verdict? I was heartbroken. I just, it just tore my heart out that, you know, I mean, I could never imagine leaving my kids for 15 months. It's just, it just makes me physically nauseous. You know, have you reached out to them? Have you called oh, her? Oh, yeah, and absolutely. And plus, I, we just filmed the reunion on Sunday, so I okay. saw her, and I, and I did reach out to her. And she's such, she's such a strong lady. She'll do, she'll do okay. We heard you guys just shot the reunion, and we know you can't dish the dirt, <laughs> but you have to give us just a couple of crumbs. Okay, well, obviously this was my first reunion, so I had mm. no idea what to expect, and I was, I, I was preparing. I did Krav Maga, I was working out more, you know, okay. you know, preparing for a boxing match, but honestly, it was more like a purging, and we were like, oh, I love you at the end, you know, so we're okay. So everybody friends now. You know, <laughs> we're not pulling each other's hair out. No, Jersey style Jersey friends. Jersey style friends, right. Jersey right. style friends. They <laughs> fight, yes. they yes. they yes. I might curse you out, but I'm going to be your friend a little bit later. Cursing, cursing is not like a bad thing in Jersey. It's just, it's just for emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We are here with Real Housewives of New Jersey cast member and breast cancer survivor, Amber Marchese. <laughs> Now, Amber, there seems to be a lot of drama between you and the New Jersey cast this season, girl. Mm -hmm. I've been watching, and we have a lot of questions that we need you to answer. But if you are not up for giving us the truth, we won't be upset. If you don't want to dish, all you have to do is take a bite of our exotic <laughs> foods that we have for you. This is a game, Amber, uh -huh. we like to call Dish or Dine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> OK, I'm up first. Our first dish is a delicious entree of sour cream and onion crickets. <laughs> now, if you don't want to give this a try, Amber, you have to tell me who is your least favorite New Jersey housewife and why? <laughs> I would say Teresa. Oh, Teresa. and why? Her personality conflict. She's, she needs to shush sometimes. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> uh, next on the menu are lovely pickled pig's feet. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna eat that. <laughs> what is the question first? Okay, the <laughs> question is, can you tell us if Reno really slept with Teresa's mom? Oh, no, it's not true. Were you there? No, I was not there. This so happened apparently you years ago. For sure. Do you want me to eat this thing? Yeah, <laughs> try to <laughs> fight. Just, just... <laughs> There you go. Mm -hmm. This store has good pickled pig's feet. That's actually good. I told you. I kind of got good. Okay. Oh, my, 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 okay. okay. Pig's feet. All right. Okay. What do you so, got, girl? Melissa said that you got on the show because you dropped her name. She actually said that? <laughs> yeah, she did. So keep it 100, oh, no. or you're going to eat some sliced cow tongue. Ew. Wow. Uh, no, it's not true. It's not. It's not so true. So how did the producers find you? Um, well, it's because we knew each other. They actually came to me prior to even, even like knowing that um, I, I did know her. And then when I told them that I knew her, it was like a match made in heaven. You guys believe her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want a cow tongue anyway? No, no, no. I, I, I had that one. <laughs> okay. Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, when you discussed Teresa's lawsuit with her, uh -huh. oh, now, one. were those real tears, uh -huh. one? Uh -huh. And why were you, like, more upset than her about it? Keep it real, or yeah. you can have a little escargot. All right, yes. give it to me. On that note, <laughs> oh. She a ride or die. Oh, yeah. yeah. They look like little pissers. <laughs> How does it taste? <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Wow. Take it like a G. Yes. All right. Name at least three reasons why Dina is jealous of you. Uh -huh. Or yeah, you I can mean, take the yeah. nibble of this hot pepper. I'll oh. take the nibble of the hot pepper. Got oh, it. Oh, I think so. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. wow. Yum. You won't even touch that one. She is like, I'm good. good. Are you ready? I've been through chemo. This is nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So was Melissa a stripper for real? <laughs> or just a cocktail waitress? Either you dish or you eat some gefilte Ugh. fish. No, she was not a stripper. She was a bartender at the strip club, and she was not ever a stripper. Yeah. Okay. Ten to know. <laughs> Setting the record straight here on The Real. OK, ladies, it's time for us dimes to speak on some of our favorite things. As dimes, we'd love to clue you in on some of the things that we just cannot live without. Well, today, we're up in the stakes and bringing you the down low on some of the pinkest products you've ever seen. That's right, they all benefit breast cancer research. Because <laughs> it's time for Dime Speak. Now, as the fabulous dime that she is, you know that I keep a crazy schedule and I have to be on time wherever I go. So when I heard that Coach had a special pink timepiece in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you know I was all over her. Not only will you be punctual, but a portion of your purchase goes to Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Dime, speak. She has to have her. As a dime, you always want to make sure you're looking good, no matter what you're doing, right? Yes. Right. Well, Reebok makes it easy to stay cute even while you're working out, hey. especially during the month of October. Check out their adorable line of pink athletic shoes. They're huge supporters of the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer, donating up to 750000 thousand of their pink ribbon product sales to the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. That, that is amazing. Time speak. Awesome. Well, unlike in my hometown of Detroit, it rarely gets cold here during the fall in LA. But you know how we do. It's fun to act as if with a scarf as a statement piece. <laughs> and true. this pretty scarf is from the Vineyard Vines. It gives you the pop of color and it wards off the chill that ain't really there. Best part, <laughs> it helps to fight against breast cancer by donating 30% of the proceeds to the Breast Cancer Alliance. Now this is how you warm yes. up, yes. okay? Yes. Time speak. I love it. No, I'm all about a poppin' lip. Now, Shiseido does it right with their Lacquer Rouge Gloss. It's more like a liquid lipstick with an amazing wet look. When you buy their doll face lacquer, you get a killer lip and a sense of pride knowing that $5 of each gloss purchase goes to the Cosmetic Executive Women's Cancer and Careers Organization, benefiting working people that live with cancer. Dime speak. <laughs> 
to change up your look with some clip-in and hair extensions. We Dodd makes it so easy to be pretty in pink with their limited edition Curls for a Cure Clip-in Pink Curl Extension. Ooh. Right? It's so cute. So cute. It's a super fun way to stand out and show your support. Get this, you guys. 100% of your purchase goes to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Wow. Dancey. I love it. We have been hearing it for years. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. But did you ladies know out there that there are foods that can help you prevent cancer? Well, today we're going to tell you all about them. Who's ready to learn how to fight back with food? Superfoods, please welcome clinical nutritionist Krista Arecchio. So, Krista, are there actually foods that you can eat to decrease cancer? There absolutely are. Food is your best defense to create a body in which cancer can't thrive. Awesome. And so we are talking about five of them today. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get started. I, I see we have some good old broccoli right here. How does this fight off cancer? Good old fashioned broccoli has two anti-cancer compounds that studies show slow tumor growth, which is amazing. Wow. And if you have it organic, you get extra credit. Oh, perfect. Broccoli is a great food to have in your diet, but some people don't like it because mm -hmm. it's mushy when cooked. So I like roasting it instead with some olive oil. And then I like to sprinkle just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. Delicious. Okay, so the next one is actually a two for one, right? Let's talk about seeds. Tell me about these. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we have two seeds that are big heavy hitters in fighting cancer. Okay. Your favorite chia seeds. They bind to excess estrogen and pull it out of the body. So they're mm. a wonderful detoxifier. And if you soak them in water overnight and then Ooh. drink that water the next day, they work even better. You kind of drink they it or you eat it like a, like a pudding. pudding. Exactly. Yeah, and then you have flax seeds, which are amazing because they have a compound called lignans, okay. which fight estrogen-fueled cancers, which is what breast cancer is. Oh. And so sprinkle them on a salad, put them in a smoothie. So I, this is like ammo. I didn't know you can just sprinkle them, on, sprinkle them on the salad like this. Ground flax seeds are best. Yeah, sprinkle them on a salad. Awesome. Them on a salad. Okay. And they taste really good, you guys. Mm -hmm. Now, we were the first to say that someone's face is beet, but <laughs> these beets can actually keep you healthy in so many ways. Krista, give us a 411. All right, so beets are super high in iron, which oxygenates the blood. Okay. And cancer can't thrive in an oxygenated environment. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like either to grate beets raw or into a salad or steam them with balsamic and goat cheese mm. for any heated dish. Mm. It's, it's really, really good. Okay, yeah. next up, salmon. All right, salmon is amazing, especially wild salmon because it's so anti-inflammatory. It's full of omega-3 fatty acids. That's its claim to fame for fighting cancer. Right, now mm -hmm. this is an easy dish. I like when you're cooking salmon to leave the skin on. I don't know, is that cheating? There's a lot of good fats There's in the skin, There's a lot right? of nutrients in the fat, and it tastes good in, in the it skin. It gets crispy, yeah. like good a potato know. chip, you guys, mm -hmm. so you can crunch without the guilt. There I love go. this. That's perfect. All right, let's see what our last food is. I like artichokes. <laughs> But I'm not sure about this artichoke smoothie. Okay, Tamara. Well, we'll have you try it in a second. But we save the best for last because artichokes have more antioxidants than any other vegetable. Wait, They're really? amazing. The anti-cancer enzymes in artichokes mm -hmm. can stop the replication of cancer cells, okay. which is really powerful. So I wanted to make the smoothie taste good for you. Okay. I added some carrots and some beets okay. and some ginger, which I think you like all those things. I do. Try it. Oh, do right, try it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm. Uh, it's not that bad. Okay. In our busy lives, sometimes we forget how important it is to help one another, but the truth is anyone can contribute at any age. And our next guest has taken it to a whole nother level. Like a lot of kids, Ava has a lemonade stand, but instead of hustling the neighbors so she can run and spend her profits, she donates everything she makes to a breast cancer charity. Mm -hmm. Let's give a warm welcome to eight-year-old Ava Burke. Yay! Hi, Ava. You look so beautiful. Thank you. you. Do. What made you want to raise money to help women with breast cancer? Well, when I heard my best friend grandmother had breast cancer, I wanted to pay a tribute to her. And my babysitter's mom has a charity called A Touch of Peak. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> she helps all the ladies in our town who have breast cancer. Oh my god, that's so cute. Oh. 
Now, with so many options, why did you choose to sell lemonade, you know, instead of like other things? I'm just a kid. <laughs> I don't have many options. So cute. You tell it, Ava. She's like, I've got lemonade on lock. <laughs> so, Ava, tell us, what's your secret recipe? Well, it's just mix and water, but my secret recipe is a lot of ice. A lot oh, of ice. Oh, oh, oh right. Okay. Oh, oh, it's right. Yes. so good cold. Because it's really, really hot in Texas. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah, it and you hot. can water it down, Ava, okay? <laughs> Auntie Lonnie knows, all right? <laughs> now, Ava, I have a serious question. How much money have you made on the lemonade? Exactly 600. Oh, wow. 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 to your parents, because I want to see what they think about this. All right. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> what's your name, Mom? Kyla Burke. And what's your name, Dad? I'm Brad. OK, uh, Kyla and Brad, so are you guys surprised at your daughter? No, not at all. She's, she's wanted to do this for a long time, and she's she just got such a giving heart, and she's very generous, and I mean, she's our miracle child. Oh, yes. So, Dad, how proud are you? Very proud. <laughs> but I've come to expect it from her. Yes! Yes. Well, good job raising a wonderful, beautiful, giving daughter. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much.